All right, so here's the thing, right? You can, uh, if you can list houses, you're going you're gonna to last, right? You get a list that lasts. But it's really not just about that. I mean, Mike likes to say that listings have babies, right? You get listings, you can get buyer leads. And uh, I'm telling you, there's no better feeling than leaving the house with listing paperwork signed, knowing you did a great job, knowing they made the right decision because you told them everything they not only wanted to hear but needed to hear to get the listing. You were honest and upfront. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a right way to do it, and there's a not so right way to do it. And uh, how many uh, people have their CHSA here in the room? Show of hands. Made a difference in your listing business? It's immensely, right? Got a track to run on when you get there. What to say, when to say, how to say it, how to talk to people. Well, um, our next speaker has, has really perfected the process up in his marketplace. And uh, if you guys get on the role play calls on Thursdays, uh, Matt Melia his, uh, is his ISA. He's uh, in charge of, of uh, you know, the, uh, the hotel marketing department for his company. And, uh, you know, Matt's been lights out and not only just helping out set appointments, but teaching your folks and our folks how to set appointments, too. So, and a lot of that, obviously, is due to Matt, but it's also due to Al, too. Um, you know, Al was a truck driver before he became a, a, uh, a real estate agent. There's Matt. What's up? You guys getting on Thursday calls? Anybody getting on Thursday role play calls for listings? Stand up, Matt. Let me see who you are. Say hi. Give him a round of applause. So, you know, Matt, uh, thanks, buddy. So... You know, Matt has really done an amazing job in, 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 in uh, helping, you know, perfect a lot of the listing side scripts and whatnot, and, and you guys get to hear him every Thursday. But so, so check this out. Al Stasek was a truck driver, and uh, he gave us, uh, he said he used to have long hair, and he actually let us know that he didn't wash it for a week once, which is pretty gross. But uh, I had to share that with you because it's pretty amazing. But anyway, so he started coaching with us in 2010, and... Um, He's been coaching with us now, you know, for about five years. He took a little time off, but he's now one of our, uh, our mastermind members. Uh, he, two years ago, he launched uh, Stasic Real Estate Experts, and he's also one of our coaches. Some of you are fortunate enough to have Al coach you. Uh, this year, he and his team are going to do 260 transactions. Uh, he's from the great city of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a couple good things from Ohio, I guess, right? So, anyway... Um, I really want you to, listen, I know this is the last session of the day, but I want you to keep your energy up, keep your breathing strong, pay attention because uh, you guys are going to be learning from a real pro how to win every listing you go out on. Let's welcome Al Stasek to the stage. Does this work? Is it on? Well, I'm going to uh, rename this. This uh, presentation was called uh, Win Every Listing at Your Price. I'm going to rename it the pre-party. Who, who here is ready to go get a drink and Sambuca and throw it down? I know I am. So um, I'm ready to have fun, and uh, I hope you are, and I hope you're ready to take some notes. Um, this presentation uh, has two two main goals. First goal is to give you a higher level view of our CHSA listing program, why we've done it. Um, last year, we didn't really get into a whole nuts and bolts lower level, but we're going to go there. I, I've, been, I've been given enough um, loose, looseness to go ahead and, and share something else with you that we developed last year and we've really perfected this year. And um, so I'm going to go over the high level view of why the system works the mindset that I think you need if you're going to uh, go out and start using this on listing appointments. And we're going to go a little lower, so we're going to start flying high, and then we're going to come in a little lower, and we're going to talk about a four-minute close, or I call it the front talk. Who, who in the room would love to um, know whether they're going to get an objection or a listing in the first four minutes of walking into a listing appointment? Yeah. So we're going to go um, deep into that. Actually, do I have a clicker? No? Is this the clicker? Okay. So we're going to get into that. Um, but this entire presentation presupposes that you have a steady stream of listing appointments already coming into your business. If you don't, the good news is we have a couple guys back there that you guys want to talk to and, and make sure that you're, you're your business is predictable and that you have that steady stream coming in. Because without listing appointments, well, you can't, you can't use what we're about to talk about today. So let's get right into it. Let's see. So 
So win every listing at your fee, at your price, with your terms, no matter who you're competing against. So th this is the, the, the uh, one page of the presentation. Um, this, this was developed, and let's start with why it was developed. When Jay Kinder was stepping out of his business, um, as you guys know, he's a master marketer. So everything in his uh, lot in Oklahoma was all about Jay. And so when he was going on listing appointments, they're expecting to see Jay. But when he knew that he was growing Kinder Reese at the time, was NIEA, um, that he had to do something to be able to uh, scale the program. So they developed this, this, this program that you, you, you see here today so that anybody that's trained can go there and get the listing and it didn't need to be J. So why? Here's one of the reasons why it was, it was also created is because who in the room has a really, really good competitor in your marketplace? Maybe one or two. In Cleveland, we have several. One of them's here. Todd Crockett, where are you at? There he is. What's up, Todd? Can you, can you leave the room? Real, you don't mind leaving the room at this point, do you? Just kidding. So you, you may have a really, really good competitor, someone who's number one, someone who sells three, 400 homes. And um, what this gives you the ability to do is differentiate yourself and compete at a high level with someone who, who might be very well outselling you. You know, they always say there's always someone who's, who's better or someone who's got, you know, more listings and they're bragging about, you know, their, their stats. This, this presentation was developed and put together so that you could, you could uh, win more listings when you're going against that big, great agent. The other reason it was developed, or another reason I should say, was because AFAs are dropping their pants with, with, with price. So th this is a story that um, I'm sure has happened to a lot of people here, but it's happened to me. Um, a couple years ago when I was still going on listing appointments, I would um, have several set up. My friend Matt, who you guys all know, would uh, keep me busy 10 to 20 a, a week usually, and I was just out there running, running, running. A lot of times, um, one of our golden rules, if we're following the system, is to make sure I'm going last. Well, that happens most of the time. I would say maybe nine out of 10 times. But then there was that one, you know, one or two times per week where I wasn't going in last, and uh, we would get a cancellation call. And the call was from a big competitor. It was not Todd Crockett. Actually, he's on the, the east side of our, our great city of Cleveland, and we're, we're located on the west. But I got a call from this girl who I actually knew from high school. Appointment was all set up. Matt followed it to the T because he always does. He could do, he could do the, the seller counseling interview, which I'm going to go over in a minute in his sleep. But they called to cancel before I even got out there. And so I called her. And I just, I, it just bothers me when, uh, you know, I don't even get a chance. I don't even get the at bat. And so I was deeply bothered. And I, I called her up and I said, Aaron, you know, how come, you know, you listed with this other company before you even had a chance to hear what I had to say? And she says, well, Al, um, they came in. Um, they, 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 they said that you're, all your sites that you're going to put me on are all the same sites. And they said if I sign with them right then and there, they'll do it for 5%. And they told me what you charge. And so, you know, that, that in itself, um, obviously the way, the, it's, it's hard to pre prevent that. But again, by following this system, which starts with a seller counseling interview, and that's one of the things in the seller counseling interview that we, we, we talk about, um, which is when we talk about, you know, there's some agents out there who may want to close you. It's a sleazy little technique that they use to try to uh, get them to sign with you, you know, right away. And, th and the reason they do that is because they don't want you to hear about our, our proven system that we have. So just don't fall for that. And that's one of the things in the seller counseling interview. So there's nine steps to success that we're going to go over. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this at a, at a kind of a fast clip because um, I want to get to the end and I want to give you guys the nuggets with the, the four minute close and the front talk. I wanna get through that. Um, so nine steps to success, articulating the value. Uh, seller counseling interview, superiority, um, developing sub superiority, and this is all before you knock on the door. Um, we have the four minute close or the front talk. Build rapport, authority, be the authority. We're gonna go over 
how to build that authority while you're there. Um, going over our process. This is our, our proven repeatable system. And this is, this is, this is the system. Um, positioning, how to position their home. And of course, the last step is deliver value. So articulating a value. Now, when I first started using this system, uh, this, this phrase that you see up here, I repeated it over and over and over and over again until I can say it in my sleep. And because this is, you know, if we're out there differentiating ourselves from your big competitor or from the AFA, what's your elevator speech when someone says, why should I, why should I list my home with you? How is your home, home selling system any different than John's? They sell three, 400 homes. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, it's a great question. I'm glad you asked. We have a proven repeatable system that's backed by market research to sell homes for up to 18% more than that of traditional real estate methods. Would you, methods, excuse me. Would you like to see how we do that? I mean, there's not too many people that are gonna say, nah, I'm not interested in that, 18% more. I, I don't know too many people who are. And um, so you have to articulate the value and in order to do that, you need to become a student and dive into this, and that's why we have our CHSA training. Seller counseling interview. Um, just out of curiosity, how many in the room make their own um, listing appointments and set their own appointments versus uh, an assistant or an ISA? So I'd say maybe about, I don't know if that's less than half. Okay, raise your hands on who has an uh, ISA setting them for them. Okay, maybe it's about half and half. Who doesn't go on listing appointments at all? <laughs> okay, all right. Well, the, this, the selling counseling interview was put together as the pregame to you going out. And it's, it's so important because when we say, how do we, how do we position ourselves up front for success on our listing appointment? The success on the listing appointment, I would, I'm, I'm gonna guess at this number. This is just my opinion, by the way. I'm going to guess that 70% of the, uh, the odds, of your odds of getting a yes and a signed listing or a no happen before you walk in that door. And a lot of it's going to be happening right here. The seller counseling interview breaks down all the, 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 the hot buttons. So you can see in the middle of the form, what, would, what are the best features of the home? Um, you, you, may, you may look at this and say, you know what, Al, this, this is easy stuff. Yeah, we, everybody does that. But following this, I'm going to tell you right now, is one of the biggest, this has been one of the biggest, um, I would, if I had to point at one thing, this has to be probably one of the biggest reasons that we've listed thousands of homes over the last few years. Because of the system that we follow, no matter who's setting the appointment, as long as they're following this system, we're going to get a, a, a repeatable uh, setup, if you will. Let's just call it a setup. Um, this also is going to help you build rapport while you're in there. We call it a little ninja move. So understand when you do this, the seller forgets that, that all these questions were asked usually. But you have it in the car when you're getting pumped up, getting ready to go in there, you're looking at it and you see that they have on there, what's the, what's the six best things, uh, what would you say the best features of your home are? And they, thought, they couldn't stop talking about the patio that they just put in. It's a $30,000 beautiful patio with a fire pit. And it's just, you know, their backyard is it. They got sound wired. So what do you think I'm going to talk about to get rapport when I get in the house and I start talking with them? David sells homes. Patio. I'm going to talk about their patio. And next thing you know, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm getting rapport. I'm connecting with them. And they don't even know why. Right? Can we go back to that? And... The most important thing is the end question, which I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it, the, the, this, this form is like a legal size form and it's not showing the whole thing. But the last question I will go over with you because this is a, this is a question that you have to ask every single time. And after you get to, to the bottom of this form, you simply say, as long as everything sounds good when we're there and you love our program, you love our company, me, we, you know, we can agree on a, on a good price or whatever. Will you be ready to list the home when I come out Tuesday at 5 o'clock? You ask that simple question, 
so that you can then position yourself for an easy close. No one, I don't think anyone in here, I mean, is, is there anyone in here who loves, you know, getting th th three objections and having to, like, hard sell someone? Nobody does. And, and you know, because we want to be expert advisors, not salespeople. And so that doesn't mean that we can't, we have to forget how to sell, okay? Because you still, and, and, and a lot of it's repetition, so doing this over and over and over again, but doing it the same way in the system that we have laid out, you're going to have much better results. Superiority. So when we set a listing appointment, the first thing that, that, that goes out, and sometimes we can't mail it, because if it's the next day, they're not going to get it, is, is a package. And... Um, Again, I, I believe, my belief is that 70% 70, 70 of that listing appointment's won before you walk in the door. How do we do that? NAEA provides, uh, I don't think it's on here, but there's a, there's a tear sheet. There's, um, there's you, you know, uh, Nick Nanton's company back there. There's opportunities for you to become a best-selling author. Um, there is, uh, oh, there is the, the tear sheet where it's uh, on that Mimi's magazine. I used it for... Uh, a, a different purpose for, for marketing. But the goal is nev never se try to sell someone who hasn't already been introduced to you and knows and, and, and position yourself in that superior thing. It's the same thing as if you're going in and getting surgery. Scary thing. And who do you trust? And I'm not saying 100% of the time, but you trust that doctor, right? Why? Because they've positioned themselves in a way that you're just not going to question them because they're the professional and you're coming to them for help. And, and, and it's important that this step isn't skipped. NAEA can help you um, establish this. Who in the room has seen this video? It's been made a couple years ago. And we're not going to play it um, because it, it kind of sucks up a lot of time. Um, proof. So... This video is going to be emailed to everybody, okay? It's going to be able to, uh, it's in a link, so you'll be able to send it. So the first thing that Matt does when he sets an appointment, is, and it actually happens automatically because we use Infusionsoft, and it automatically um, will go out once we click appointment set, the sellers are going to get this, this video. This video takes you through all the seven laws and sells for you, and there's a little... There's a little thing about cartoons that I didn't know about. Um, cartoons are not judged. You remember Jay talking about judger mode earlier today? Being in judger mode or learner mode? When people see a video, for instance, or even you in person, the judging is going to start right off the bat. They're going to judge you by how you dress, how you speak. If you're tall or short, they're going to judge. But you know what's not judged? Cartoons. And so because this is like one of those cartoons where they sketch the thing out and everything, it literally will go through the system and pre-sell them on all the things that are in our program. So that goes out right away. Um, has anybody used this in their, before they go out on listing appointments? Has it, has it helped you? Yeah. I mean, it really takes a lot of the heavy lifting away. Four-minute close. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this now. I'm going to save this for the end. But, um, you know, the, the four-minute close, I developed it because when, when I first started using this program, it was brand new. It was brand new to NAEA. It was brand new to us. And just like anything, you know, you're not going to learn how to hit a 90-mile-an-hour fastball until you take a lot of swings and you're, you're practicing. And I had to go on a lot of appointments and screw it up. But I started to get good, and I started seeing some success. And even if you follow, let's just be real, open and real, right? Even if you follow it to the T, there is going to be some occasions where you get an objection at the end. But by, by learning this and practicing it the right way, it's designed so that you don't get an objection at the end. But I was still getting them every once in a while. Just once in a while. And so we came up with this four-minute close. And again, I'm not going to get into it. But basically, we set ourselves up for success once again, just like the seller counseling interview does. We're going to do it one more time, but we're doing it right when we get in there, right when we get in the door. I want to know, by a show of hands, if you had an opportunity to know before you walk in the door 
what their objection was going to be, who here would not want to know that? Right? So it's kind of like cheating, but it works. So we're going to get into that. Building rapport. Um, I know that I lost out on a few listing appointments because I, I skipped a, a crucial step. And, um, you know, there's other real estate coaches and trainers out there that, um, that may disagree with r the rapport step. I fully, and us at NAEA, and it's part of our system, fully, fully am 100% am convinced that you have to friend these people, all right? And I'm not saying you have to be best friends with them, but by skipping the part of rapport, for instance, going around, and again, going back to the seller counseling interview, I know why they're moving. I know what they think their best things about their house are. And as we go around, and as we look at, at the, uh, you know, if I'm going around and I see um, this guy's got a tennis trophy. I don't know why you would want to leave a tennis trophy out. I, 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 I leave mine out. But I'm a tennis player, and I, I got something to talk about right away with them. And, and, and I'm not saying to go off of the line very far, but it is a rapport builder, and you need to use these little things to build rapport as part of your system. I do it when I'm walking around the house. It's a perfect opportunity to, uh, to build rapport and, and friend them. There's nothing worse than having a better, there's nothing worse, and this has happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to some people, there's nothing worse than going into a, a listing, not going last, waiting the next day for that phone call, and then finding out that you got beat out by someone who you know you could have helped them. You know, deep in your soul, that your program's better, your, your, your service is better, and you're like, damn, how did, I, how, did I, how did they just not list it with me? A lot of times it's because you got outfriended. All right? Authority. This is Steve, Steve uh, Harney, or Harvey, I'm sorry. That was an amazing presentation. I've seen him probably, what, three, four years in a row. That was the best I've seen. But... Um, Authority is the ability to convince this person that you, they need to listen, right? Because what happens if they don't listen to you? What, what happens? Well, they may overprice the house. They may not stage it because you told them to. We need them to listen, right? And so how do we, how do we get the authority, which comes with it respect, so that they will listen to you. Well, one way is to go through the uh, NAEA provides all Steve Harvey's uh, data so that you can go through that with them. I'm going to share a little trick with you guys. Um, and I, I, I did this and it's not hard. I don't have a really good memory, but I, I figured out I could memorize this. Does anybody, um, uh, anybody know what an absorption rate is? Right? So if you don't know what an absorption rate is, it's the rate of what, what homes are selling for or not selling for. And it's very easy to uh, figure out what the absorption rate is. All you do is you take the number of homes that have sold, you can go over a six month period, divide it by six, see how many are selling per, per month. And you take that number and see how many are on there on the market right now and it'll tell you how many months of inventory. If not one more home was sold, how many months of inventory? So the way I get authority is when I walk in there, I have that memorized. I'm not going into any kind of spreadsheet to look and I, I look at them and I say, this is how many homes are in the market in Bay Village. This is how many have sold. And the absorption rate is two months. So that's looking real good. By the way, do you know what the absorption rate is, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? Now, do they think I'm smart at that point? And it's not that difficult, but I'm impressed by someone who knows their numbers, right? And they don't know those numbers. But you're damn sure that they're going to be impressed that you know it because the people that you're going against probably do not know those numbers. Another great point of differentiation. The process. We got the seven laws. Um, I'm going to go through them quickly. Law of expertise, law of differentiation, law of exposure, Law of cooperation, 
law of buyer acquisition, and the law of negotiation and law of execution. Um, we're not going to, again, this is a, a higher level view at this, but going through, and, and when, when I was going on a lot of these appointments, I, I did not, because I sent the video, I, and I always ask them, did you see the video? And if they said yes, I knew that I wouldn't have to go through the whole thing again because they already, they already heard it. But what I do do is I look for, for opportunities through the, when, I, when I'm walking through the house with them or having the conversation with them about certain things on the differentiation or certain things in the law of cooperation. I look for opportunities and then resort right back to it and, and, and explain to them, look, you know, we actually have a, one, a part of our system, our proven repeatable system, is that we have a law for uh, you know, differentiation, that expert staging advice and quality life upgrades. And, and I still do go through them and get the little trial closes at the end, and it makes it, makes it so much more seamless when you um, are asking for the business. Positioning. This goes kind of back with you know, the superiority. If we can't get them to listen to us, then positioning the home is going to be difficult, right? I thought someone clapped. I don't know what that was. We can't, we can't get them to, if we can't get them to listen, if we can't get them to understand that you are the expert, positioning the home is going to be difficult. But again, going through the CHSA training, the word positioning versus pricing, what sounds better? Let's position, let's position your home to attract the high offer versus a low offer, because you do want a high offer, correct, Mr. Mrs. Seller? Versus pricing it high, pricing it low. We speak in terms of the positioning. So delivering the value. Um, this is a, something that stuck with me last year when Jay says that, you know, you can't be an expert without being an expert. You can't claim to have the best service unless you're delivering on that service. So part of this program is being that expert, is having that back-end support if that's what, you know, you're, you're, if, that, if you're not a single pr practitioner and have a team, it's making sure that everything's working properly and that you can back up what you're telling them. Because there's nothing worse than coming in and, 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 and doing, doing the whole show and getting their trust and them signing and they're excited to be working and then let them down on the back-end. So we got to make sure that we have our, our, our processes in place. Um, to support that. Certainty. People will pay a premium for knowing, and not just knowing, but being absolutely certain that you are the expert, that you have 100% of their trust, and versus the next person who they're, they're, they're not really that certain about because maybe they didn't present a proven system or they didn't know their numbers, right? or they didn't give them the right advice, and people will pay more. I am not, we're not gonna get into commission languages about what people charge or what people don't, should charge, and that's not where I'm going with this, but I can tell you right now, I have never, years ago before I started my team, maybe, but a after 2007, I have never been the, the, um, the, 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 the lowest fee commission. I've always been the highest. And so I've been able to walk away, earn what I'm worth, even when my, comp my competition is telling them they'll do it for 1% or 2% less or half a percent less or whatever. And it's because of positioning. So the four-minute close, ah, my favorite part. Does anybody have any questions on that before we get into this? Cool. All right. So going back to why we developed this. Um, I developed it because that first part, again, going back to, there, there's, there's differentiation in all parts of this system kind of wo woven into all the reasons why we do what we do. But there's not too many agents that are going to come in and do, do a, what we call a front talk, right? And um, I'm just going to tell you that where, where, where this came from. So I hired a guy who was the number one Kirby salesman in Ohio. Anybody know what Kirby vacuum cleaners are? Now, anybody that can go door to door with no warm call to them saying we're coming, knock on the door, 
and sell someone a $1,500 vacuum cleaner that they probably don't need, I'm going to listen to what, what he's doing, right? And I, I'm not suggesting that um, everyone go buy a Kirby vacuum cleaner. I'm just, I, 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 I'm a student of the game, so I take little takeaways. And so I knew that in part of how they were able to be so successful selling, I mean, these people had a perfectly good vacuum cleaner that was working fine. And I said, well, how, how did you get so much success? And he said, well, it was all done up front. So that's how the front talk was developed. So it starts with you're in the car, you're getting psyched up, you're going in to meet some people you've never met before, right? You might be going against some, some other agents or not, but you should, you should be going in with the same zest. Get yourself mentally ready and go in there and smile and knock on that door and get ready. And this is kind of how it goes. <sighs> Mr. Mrs. Seller, oh, thanks for having me over. You know, before we get started today, I first want to thank you for giving me your time and the opportunity to potentially be your real estate advisor. And at the end of the time, our time together, there's going to be one of three things that typically occurs. One, if you determine that, uh, if I determine we're unable to help you, um, is it okay if I'm straight with you and just let you know that up front? Yes? Okay. Thank you. Number two, you don't think that we can help you or you don't want our help. And if that's the case, will you just let me know so I don't waste any more of your time? My feelings won't be hurt. Is that okay? Awesome. And third, I find that we can help you. And if that's the case, we can spend the last bit of our time talking about what that looks like. So nice little easy dialogue kind of lays out the three things that could possibly happen at that point. And if anybody's been following on any EA calls, this is straight out of, uh, we, we have a lot of these scripts available for you um, in the reverse selling. Anybody heard of the reverse selling that we've been working on with any EA? So this is the time, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when most agents they're going to do a dance for you and tell you how great they are and they're number one and, and all this. Instead of me talking about how great I am, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is just take my sales realtor sales hat off and just talk about you. Is that okay? So I just want to confirm a few things before you show me your home. When you spoke with Matt or when we spoke together last Monday when we set this appointment, you had said that the reason that you guys wanted to move was you were tired of the, the Cleveland snow and winters and you wanted to go and re retire down where your, your daughter lives down in, in, in sunny Silicon Valley. <laughs> Hope you got like five houses to sell in Cleveland if you're going to go move in there. <laughs> Has anything changed since we talked, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? Awesome. Well, unlike the average agent, I'm not here to fill your head. With, with, uh, with things that you want to hear, just so I can stick my sign in the yard. In fact, we turn down more listings than we take, but I will be telling you what you need to hear in order for you to make the best decision. Is that okay with you, Mr. Jennings? Great. Now, I, I want to pause for a second, because when you deliver this, this is, this is a key moment that when you deliver this the right way, you're going to get a good reaction. Because do you think that people want to be, do they think, do people, do you think that people want, want to, you to tell them what they want to hear? Sometimes, maybe subconsciously they do, right? They want, their house is worth 200000 but they want to listen for two fifty, and maybe subconsciously they really do want you to agree with that. But most people, they're going to react to this, and they're going to say, well, yeah. Well, that's why we called you, Al. Be real with me, right? That's the reaction that you're going to get. So when you get that, that's when you, you, you know you delivered it right and you go into, well, perfect. Because all I ask is that when we're all done and you're comfortable with our home selling system, I'm going to ask you to hire me as your real estate advisor in return. You just give me a simple yes or no. Is that fair enough? Is that fair enough, Todd? Awesome. Let's go see this awesome house. And then I go. Now, here's what can happen. And Jay and I were... Uh, in his room preparing our, our presentations and he, he, you know, I obviously asked him permission to, to share this because this is actually not an NAEA script, it's, it's mine. And um, he did grant me that. But 
this is where, um, what do you think could happen at that moment? There's one of two things that are going to happen. Either they're going to show you the house, because you just asked them to give you a simple yes or no. Is that fine? In other words, you're asking them to make a decision. That's all I'm looking for. Not a maybe, not I need to think about it. You're asking them to make a decision. And you don't deliver this in a salesy way. This is a casual conversation. Remember, we took our sales hat off, right? But once you deliver this last line, there's a possibility you may get an objection, right? Because they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're asking me to make a decision. Whoa, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. So what do you do? Well, I got the answer for you. We came up with the five lies. I believe that there's only five lies or objections. Sorry, I call them five lies. I believe there's only five real objections. You, there might be more, but for the most part, um, I broke down five that I heard the most. I believe that you're going to hear the most. Would anybody want to see all five in our rebuttals that we use in our listing presentations? I believe that, I, I truly believe that th this, we make this harder than, than it needs to be. I know I did. I didn't have this, these by the way, when I was going out on listing appointments. I kind of skipped this. I, I've stepped away from the sales end of, and, and just run my business on the operations and um, end of things at this point. I have an awesome team that um, I'm grateful for and that allows me to do that. But I didn't have this then. I developed it for them. And I, I would say that if I was back or ever had to go back into the field. I would memorize these in my sleep. And the reason I would memorize them, I would record them on my iPhone little recorder thing and play them over and over and over again at the gym or where, whatever you do so that you are unconsciously, uh, what, what is it? Un, uh, comp, what is it? Unconscious competent. Yes, that's it. We need to be unconsciously competent when we're walking in the door. How many times have you been on a listing appointment and they said, oh, man, well, you know, everything you said is great, but I think we're going to need to pray on it. Okay. I can step outside real quick while you, you get it on or, or whatever. But you know that, that that's not natural. That really feels salesy. So why don't we get it out up front, right? And so... I think I, need to, I think I need to think about it, Al. But the goal would be to get this not at the end, although you can use these rebuttals even if you get them at the end. The goal would be to get it up front. That's why I wrote it. The front talk isn't necessarily meant to elicit an objection if there isn't one there. I mean, I'm guessing at the number, but maybe 30% of people will just maybe list with you. And it's easy. You come in there. And they're like, all right, I don't have time to listen to all your stuff. Where's the paperwork? Let's get it signed. If everyone was just that easy, then I wouldn't be up here. We wouldn't even need it, right? But we know that the seven out of the ten, you're going to have to work for it. I'm, I'm going to suggest and from, from Brian Moses that mentioned, um, I think, two, two presentations ago about the difference between motivation. What's more, what's more important, motivation or, or, or skill? I believe it's skill as well. Because if you get skilled at this... I believe there isn't another thing that you can learn that's going to end up making you more money if you're going on listing appointments and growing your business and making it easy and scalable than this. And, of course, then being able to pass it down to, um, you know, your agent. So I need to think about it. I completely understand. It's perfectly okay to want to think about it, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Can you, can you do me one more one favor? Sure. Well, while I'm going through my, my home selling system, if you could try and think of any questions that you might have while I'm still here to answer them, would you do that for me? Would you mind? That way we get it out. What I find is that if people say they got to think about it a lot of times, it's just I missed something in the presentation. I want to make sure that I answer all your questions then. Is that fair enough, Sevy? Sevy? Okay. Cool. Line number two. Well, we, got, we still have other agents we're talking to. Now, Again, if we're, if we're using the, um, the, the, the seller counseling interview properly, we may not see this. We hope to never, ever get this one, right? 
This is one I hate worse than anything. This is probably the toughest one. Um, but the rebuttal can go, I completely understand it's perfectly okay. By the way, is anyone catching in this? There's a, there's a, there's a purpose to a rebuttal. And it starts with agreeing with them. Okay? Let's break, let's break down the whole tension of that, that the rebuttal, or, or that, the, that the objection or the brush off creates with just agreeing with it. And these words, hey, completely understand. It's perfectly okay to talk to other agents, but I just want to circle back to when you spoke with Matt. You had said that you value an agent who has excellent communication skills. The last agent did not have that. And a proven marketing plan. Is that still right? Great. Well, here at Stasic Real Estate Experts, we pride ourselves on communication and marketing. We put that in writing. So instead of me telling you, I'd much rather show you once we get to the end of the appointment, if you're not fully convinced, that's fine. But I can assure you, the more you think about it, the more you're going to realize that we're the agent that you've been waiting for. Lie number three. Ah, oh, the commission. Well, how much do you charge? Right? Or, well, that depends on what you charge. I don't know what your fees are. Wall. The agent rebuttal. Hey, it's perfectly okay to want to know how much we charge, and we definitely will go over that, but let me ask you a question. If I could show you a way that we can net you up to 18% more that would more than cover our fees, and you're comfortable with our program, are you going to be ready to get the process started today? Agree, isolate it, and then circle back. I want it out of the way. And you can also use that at the end if you get it, but you want to get it, I, I, want, I want to know what it is up front. Right? Look, number four, we're not ready yet. Anybody ever get that? I used to get that, which I thought was weird. Seeing as though Matt ends every single appointment with, if you love our program and you like Al and everything works out great and you can agree on price, are you going to be ready to list your home when we come out Friday? Well, never Fridays. I don't, I don't do appointments on Friday. So Thursday, Thursday at 6. And they say yes. And then we get to the appointment and they tell me they're not ready. They're ready. They're just scared. They're nervous that you're, you're, they're going to make a bad decision. That's really what it boils down to. They don't want, it's not that they don't want to hire you or, or, or sign paperwork. It's a big step, obviously. But, the, but, the, but psychologically, they're, they're, they're saying that they're not ready when they told you a day or two ago that they were ready. That's just a brush off. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I, I hear that you're not ready and it's perfectly fine because the true beauty in our program is that step number one is to prepare your home well before we list it in the MLS so that we can position you for a high offer versus attracting a lower offer. You do want higher offers, right? Exactly. So why don't we do the right thing? Let me call my stager and see when our next opening is. Sound good? By the way, one other little nugget. I have an excellent stager, and uh, her name's Janice. And by the way, um, Jana, I want to say, stager homes by Jana. You guys, if, you, if you're in the area over here, I know she has got a pretty big network, but check her out. Um, they have an excellent program, and I, I guess a nationwide network similar to ours. Um, I, I'm pretty sure she's here. I don't know if she has a booth. But going back to the stager, I would close for the stager. In fact, during my presentation, when I got to differentiation, which is in our program, is, is the second law of differentiation. That's where staging and preparing your home is under, differentiation. If we, if we want the pictures to be outstanding, then we need to do the staging so that the pictures come out great. And why do we do all that? Because we're differentiating. And money moves the difference, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. You understand the law of differentiation? So going back to Janice, I wouldn't ask them to, okay, are you ready to list your home with me? I just asked him, are you ready to meet with Janice? And I pumped her up so big. I had a couple that um, I was on this appointment, uh, and I had one of my agents, Dan Walters, who you may have met. He's not here uh, this week. But he was, uh, it was, he was sitting with me in training so that he can go on these appointments. And the husband looked at me. This is before the close. And he goes, Al, I'm not sure if I'm ready to list with you, but I want to meet this Janice person. I'm like, here's the agreement. You don't meet Janice till we, we, it's a go. 
And I, and I, I close for the stager because why? It's the first step in the program almost always. I would probably say seven out of 10. Does anyone not stage their homes here? It is a true, true, um, it's, it's a must, truly. And I, I found by talking to a stager that the one thing we're, we're, I think we're missing the, the boat on is we're not staging our, our empty homes. So Matt, that's gonna be a priority once we, we get back. But um, so I think there's an opportunity there. But I close for Janice. And so when they say we're not ready yet, that's a perfect opportunity to go for a coming soon listing um, and getting it signed. We've had listings signed nine months before they were actually ready to go on the market because the gentleman happened to be a widow, lost his wife to cancer. He had to get the house ready, wallpaper, new countertops. There, this wasn't just a, a quick, let's move the clock over here and, and the couch here. It was a, it was a full, full deal. Don't give your resources away until you get the, the, your, their name signed on the dotted line. Secure your listing before you give them your contractors and your painters and your stagers and everything else. Get the listing, everyone. All right, and lie. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction. Oh, well, what are you going to price it at? You may get this one at the end. I'm going to highly, highly, highly recommend you do not get into price while, while completing this presentation. What you want is buy-in, because pri price is a whole nother, that's a different discussion. There, our marketing, if it's priced right, we're going to get you top dollar no matter what that price is. So I, I can't tell you how many listing appointments I walked out of where the price wasn't determined yet. And that's when I feel that I won, right? You are going to get those people who are just like, yeah, I heard all that awesome stuff that you got, but we're, I want to I know price. I want to price, 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 price. If you give them price, especially up front, you're done. Forget it. They're not even going to hear the rest of the stuff you're going to say. They're just, they're either real happy or, not, or, or real pissed off about whatever the price you just gave them was, right? Save it to the end. Get the buy-in. Are you comfortable with our program? Are you comfortable with everything we went over? I had a, I had a, uh, a sharp guy that I was um, at a listening appointment for, and, and he, he figured it out because he goes, well, Al, if I tell you that I'm comfortable with everything, that means you're going with me. All right, we're going with you, right? We're signing. I go, yeah. Why wouldn't you? If you're comfortable, why wouldn't you move forward, right? So if they're, they're comfortable with the system, you're getting buy-in on that, and all we have to do is price, then move to that. But where are you going to price my home? Ah, the question of where to price the home. It's perfectly okay to want to know where to price your home, but let me ask you something. We use a show-you type of pri pricing process versus a tell-you. If we can come to an agreement on where your home should be positioned in today's market, are you going to be comfortable getting the process started today? Awesome. Cool. Does anyone have questions on any of these? Was the five lies helpful? I'm sure we can get you a copy of it. So last year, um, I guess I'm going to end. Am I ending early? Wow, I'm early. Sweet. Get to the bar. 100, you got a question? I would do it standing up. His question was, um, do you do the four minute close standing up or sitting down? I'd prefer doing it standing up because we're, then we're gonna go up and see the house. So that's a good question though. I don't wanna get them too comfortable, but I have done it where I'm sitting down too. Is there any others? No? So 100-0, how does this tie in? Well, um, this kind of goes back to Steve Harvey. I, I, I can't get that presentation out of my mind because it resonated so deeply with me. But it goes back to an obligation, right? We do have a fiduciary obligation. If we know that we're their best choice, then at that point we have an obligation, 100% accountable we are, to making sure that they're going to listen to us Listen to our advice so that we can get them across the finish line and get them to Florida or get them wherever they're going the right way, position their home for a high offer. We have that obligation. Would everybody agree with that? So one of our core values is 100-0. It's a um, core value that's shared by NEA and my company. And um, 
I just, that's just a belief, you know. We have a 100% responsibility to do it the right way, and there's zero excuses for screwing it up. Because if we screw it up, it could mean they, they're, it could mean they're making double house payments for a long time. It could mean that they don't sell at all if we screw up. When you start looking at it through a different lens, I think that you'll agree that um, you're going to close more because your approach isn't going to be salesy. It's going to be from here. That's going to resonate with people. It's going to res- they're going to feel it, right? And I think it's a 100-0 responsibility. So... Um, in ending, I look forward to seeing you all at Sambuca. I appreciate your attention. Um, and these, these um, 100 zero bracelets, anybody want one? Cool. Well, if you go see the girls at NAEA, um, I have about 100. I didn't bring enough. So there's no stampedes, no stepping on over, over children and women to get one, but just stop at the NAEA, NAEA booth and Ask Crystal or, or one of the girls, and um, hopefully you guys put this on, and it reminds you on your listing appointments of some of the things you learned today. Thank you. Appreciate it.